Once again, we're here at East Coast Gear Supply. Owner operator Chase is with me, and we're going to talk about center section. Now, when you look at a lot of axle builders, you'll see them head to the junkyard buying a couple hundred 14 bolts at a time, but there's no junkyard axles to start with here, right? No, we don't anymore. That's how we started. We started doing eight eights out of the junkyard, and um, it was so difficult to try to make that junkyard axle look new once you gave it to the customer that one day we were like, you know, if we could just start new, this would be a lot easier. And so from that point on, which was about 15 years ago, you know, we started developing different castings along the way to fill the need. And so this is kind of the whole family of axles here at East Coast Gear Supply. So let's just run down them. What are we starting with right here? All right, so this is what we call a 485. And it is a Dana 44-ish axle that will run a Dana 44 eight and a half inch ring gear. J truck, CJ, that's where you would have found these in, so, in the day. So old school yeah, Dana 44. Old school Dana 44. It's a two and three quarter tube. This is also very similar to what would have came in the back of uh, TJ, like a mm -hmm. Rubicon TJ when they had the upgraded 44 mm -hmm. as opposed to a 35. So uh, two and three quarter tube. And this is basically the smallest axle we build is this two and three quarter tube. Works great for CJs, restos builds, and industrial applications for lighter duty vehicles. We do a ton of these. Cause the old school, they had a lot smaller axle to it. So if you're working, if you're trying to restore your CJ, yeah. you don't want to put a one, a 60 underneath yeah. it. You want an old school looking axle. Yeah, I mean with the CJ, it's had an AMC 20, two and a half inch tube. They're wore out. Yeah, so it's just, 100 years old and um so i can build you something brand new uh that you know fits perfect for your vehicle it looks right in there you know it's not some big behemoth in the back uh so 485 or dana 44. all right and then we move on to these are the two what i would call jk outs correct yeah so this is front what we call 489 because it runs at 8.9 inch ring gear this is a high pinion 44 and a little bit bigger ring gear than your your old school Dana 44. So basically we're like, all right, we're gonna make a casting. Let's make it for, you know, the largest ring and pinion made for this series of axle. This is three inch tube. So when you see a JK front axle from the factory, it's gonna be two and a half inch tube. So like I talked about earlier, you know, as we increase the OD of that tube, huge strength advantage. Plus we thicken up the wall thickness of the DOM that we use. So very robust Dana 44, high pinion, perfect for that 35, 37 inch tire. And this accepts all the Rubicon stuff for? Uh, so this does not, we, we have, this is a conventional casting is what we call it because when you build with a conventional 44, I can run any locker or carrier option you want. You want a true track, you want open, ARB, eat me locker, any of those things, everything will fit in this casting. Whereas if it's a Rubicon, it's going to be E-Locker only or ARB. Because of that larger side bearing. Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this would be aftermarket locker options. Great upgrade if someone still has that factory JK30 in the front of their, uh, front of their rate. So great upgrade there. This is obviously rear version of that. Correct. So uh, takes a 8.9 inch rear gear like a JK would. Uh, three and a quarter tube on this one. Uh, so we increase the tube size in the rear because they see a little bit more abuse in the back. You know, a good stock replacement and or upgrade for like a Dana 35. You have a TJ and it had a Dana 35 that's bad. You could go to the junkyard, try to find one that's good. There isn't any. Uh, they're all bad. Uh, <laughs> so we can build you a new 44. You're not doing anything crazy. 35 inch tire. You know, this is an axle that's the perfect replacement axle versus you trying to band-aid a junkyard axle back together. Perfect. Now we get into one ton family. Correct. So where are we starting right here? All right, so this is the Ardana 60, 9.75 inch ring gear. And this is the rear, but it's high clearance. This is our front, the covers do, uh, they do share cover, so the covers are interchangeable, but both a uh, high clearance design. And again, we've stepped up tube size. We have three and a half and four inch. A uh, four inch Dana 60 is not a huge seller for us because I think if you go into that four inch realm, you really need to move to a bigger ring gear. However, we did the four inch Dana 60 because 
there's different things that we do that, you know, don't really have to do with the off-road industry. It, maybe it's a very heavy vehicle that only goes 10 miles an hour. Well, because it's heavy, I need to run that big heavy wall tube in it. And the ring and pinion of the Dana 60 is fine, but I need to make that housing strong enough to take the weight, take the weight of the yeah. vehicle. So, so, so three and a half and four inch Dana 60 rear high clearance. And then this is the same, but front. Correct. So front 60, high clearance. We run a 10-inch gear in this. It's made to accept the 10-inch the front gear that Dana makes and Nitro's made. Again, we did this in 3.5 and, and 4-inch. Uh, again, for the same reason, we're working on a ram axle and some other platforms. But again, this isn't we're going to go beat this off-road. This is, this is a very heavy vehicle, and I need to be able to support it. So that's a big reason why I have the the four inch tube in this casting of well too. If you're building a buggy, we can do a four inch, like three eighths wall, and that can lighten it up, but you get the, the strength, strength of being because of the four large tube. Yep. All right, so 14 bolt. It just looks very different than the factory 14 bolt. Yeah, correct. So this is our design 14 bolt, family favorite, 10 and a half inch ring gear, uh, but excellent ground clearance. Because of the way we designed the casting, we basically pre-shaved it. Uh, we also put some mounting bosses up top because it's common that when you try to get a truss on this thing and mount length, so much stress and leverage on that truss. And if you're trying to weld the casting, those welds want to crack when you're putting all that forces into it. So we have tie-in points and, you know, customer's choice if you're building your own buggy, but we'll drill the truss or the plate and then we'll actually bolt it down, but then we'll weld it, you know. And I've had people say, well, why don't you make it unboltable? I mean, you're not building a truss to unbolt. Yeah. You're literally, you're doing this as an anchor point, right? Even if I'm running a three link up here and, you know, a single three link takes a lot of stress, we really need to tie it into the center of this to make sure that nothing, you know, shifts and changes. So, and then everything else, like you said, pre shaved. So now it's got a flatter bottom. Yeah. Uh, and it's grooved in the bottom so you don't have to shave the ring gear right correct yeah so two castings and we'll show those in detail one that runs the shaved gear and one that does not all right and, and this is also four inch tube again you can run three eighths wall to try to save some weight or if it's something that's really heavy and you're concerned you can bump up to half wall all right last one the biggest one yeah the dana 80 so again four inch extremely heavy duty and you know, our recommendation for the extreme and where people kind of miss the extreme is, is the 14 bolt is a great buggy axle, but where the market has kind of gone is I've got a 42 inch tire, 700 horsepower, and oh yeah, I want to drive this thing 15,000 miles a year. Yeah. So those are two equal and opposite forces. You have buggy tremendous shock load very little heat very little mileage wear now we have shock load mileage wear so with a dana 80 i mean you can see the physical difference you're going to lose ground clearance here you know 11 and a quarter inch rings here but massive differential bearings again good separation of bearings so from a pinion uh, perspective it limits deflection on pinion carrier bearings are separated better they're also much bigger, so it limits your deflection on ring gear. A Dana 80 is extremely strong, and you do lose a uh, ground clearance, but you have to. If you want to drive 20,000 miles a year, run a 42-inch tire and beat the hell out of it and go home. Can you swear on camera? Sure. Okay. Uh, if you want to beat it, you know, I like going to the 80 um, in some of these, like, high-powered JL builds that uh, are running big tires because this is your insurance policy. Do you really care about that extra half inch of clearance or do you care about like getting home for sure? You know, with a buggy, that half inch of clearance can be the difference between a time or whatever and you, you expect that you're gonna service, go into, and you're not trying to drive at home. Yeah, but this is kind of the drive home option of I want to do everything, and the only downgrade is you lose some ground clearance. Yeah, so like like you said, the big thing now, you see them out there, the guys, they build a JL, they have a 392, they want huge axles, 42-inch tires, they want to go run buggy trails and not put it on a trailer. Correct. This would be what you would suggest for them. That's what I would 
if that was going on, if it's just like, ah, oh, it's got a Jeep body, but it's more of a buggy, yep. then you're coming here. Yeah, I personally built a, a JL. I put an 80 in the rear, and then I personally built like a JK buggy, put a 14 bolt in the rear. You know, it's that's it, kind of how I I like it. If you want to do both, go 80. If you just want to go beat around in the woods, go 14 bolt. You're going to get better ground. There you go. So no junkyard axles here at East Coast Gear Supply. All new center sections building the axles that you need.